So one of the things that uh, most of us probably know and experience is that vision, especially the faith-infused kind of vision, rarely just spurts out in the midst of the clutter of our lives. Vision requires space. It requires space to be unearthed, space to be deeply imagined, space to come into clarity. And so that's why, though we're after vision in this challenge, we begin with media fast. Because we are a distracted people. Uh, and our primary tool of distraction in our context is media. So maybe your choice is Netflix, maybe you're an internet shopper, maybe you get uh, wrapped up in the Facebook feed, maybe you appreciate gaming, I'm sure I've missed some, but these are the things that we find our time lost to and that clutter our, uh, our minds and our hearts and make things like vision hard to access. So as Brad said, for our vision challenge uh, this month, our aim is to turn off, um, to boldly turn off all the screens two hours before we retire for the night to make space for something different. And the space that we're aiming to make is, is to nurture the soul. Right, And that can sound like sort of an elusive or mysterious thing. But broadly speaking, if we understand the soul to be that part of us that longs to and can connect deeply, connect deeply with God, connect deeply with the people in our lives, connect deeply with our own deepest self, even though we live inside this body, sometimes we don't even hear our own voice, our own longing. So soul nurture is anything that nurtures this kind of connection. So the, the, the activities that count in the realm of soul nurture are varied. Uh, I would start with sleep. Sleep is often a matter of soul nurture because who can connect in any direction when you're chronically exhausted? So for some of us, I hope the month of October will equate to more sleep. Anything that helps us to connect more deeply with other people is soul nurture. So whether it's uh, intentional walks after dinner uh, with our housemates or our family, special desserts that we invite friends over to share with us, a game night, these are all soul nurturing things. These are the things uh, that we want to be participating in this month. And I hope it will be part of the fun and the creativity um, as we make space, how will we choose to spend that space? But specifically, as it regards um, welcoming God to stir up vision in us for how it is that he would have us become more like Jesus, of course, part of soul nurture is prayer, reading, reflection, and we've prepared a tool for us to use this month, hot off the river presses. Each of you, as you leave this morning, will receive a Vim journal. Uh, this journal is envisioned to be used by us throughout the year, our year of intention. When you open it up, you'll find that there are four tabs, one for vision, one for intention, one for means, and a freebie that you can name for your own purposes. Um, for our challenge, of course, we'll be in the vision tab. We're starting with trying to invite God to stir up vision in us. And we've uh, uh, queued up two activities to that end, knowing that vision comes from at least two directions. Vision can come from unearthing the desire that already exists within us. And so reflection around questions that basically get us thinking in that direction will be helpful You'll find uh, journal pages, each with a question prompt. I think there are about 10 of them that just come at that from a different slice. What is it that you're wanting more of? What is it that you're needing more of in intimacy with God, in character like Jesus, in the power that Jesus lived in? What is it that you want? That's one exercise. The second exercise is recognizing that vision also often comes to us through external inspiration, and our inspiration is the person of Jesus. So the invitation is to spend this month reading about the life of Jesus, watching the life of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. 
since the Sermon on the Mount that we're focused on in our Sunday morning teaching is in Matthew, we decided let's read that whole book. Matthew has 28 chapters, so if you took one um, a night uh, and spent some time in it, that would pretty much take you through the month of October. And we've accompanied the encouragement to read that with some journal pages where you can just make note of what, what are you noticing about Jesus? Maybe it's something that's really familiar to you. Maybe it's something that pops as, it, as a new, a new insight about what Jesus is like. And then that turn of what is it about that that you would like more of? So the vision challenge. We're going to turn off media to tune into soul care and specifically to be inviting God to stir up our vision for how it is that we might intend and find means to change and become more like Jesus. Uh, people never know if they're supposed to clap or not. Do you like the way we wore matching clothes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, hey, a couple of specific questions okay. before we... Um, families um, have often said, these sorts of things seem like a double challenge for us. So yeah. Yeah. what words of help would you have? Yeah. Um, for those of us who are parents, uh, one of my thoughts is that things as concrete and tangible as a fall challenge, a vision challenge, can actually be a really helpful way to live out our spiritual lives before our kids. And that's one of the things that people who research such things say really helps faith stick from one generation to the next, is being able to see tangibly how our parents live out faith. So I want to encourage you to make your participation in the challenge known to your kids. That can begin with just talking about how it is you're changing your rhythms of life this month and why you're doing it. Um, But I also think there, given the wide uh, range of possibilities for what is soul nurturing. I think there are ways in which you could potentially reformat uh, your family's activities in the evening uh, to be in soul nurture together. Like I mentioned, family walks after dinner, special desserts, game nights, these kinds of things. And I do think that for families with um, kids at least who've hit like the school years, it's possible to consider reading in the Gospel of Matthew together. And just doing, like our kids are familiar with, wondering questions about what do we notice about Jesus. You can do that straight through the Gospel of Matthew. Um, You might, age appropriate, uh, find other Jesus stories and just be looking at the person of Jesus together. I will say this from my own experience, that I find it difficult as a parent to be deep in my own reflection while I'm leading my kids in reflection. So just very honestly, I'm probably going to do a half-half thing. I'm going to spend sort of half of my challenge time with my family together and half of my challenge time once my kids are in bed or otherwise occupied. So feel, feel freedom to work with those kind of awesome. things. We also know that there are some people who survive life by working in the evenings, sometimes after the kids go to bed, or if you don't have kids, you just have more work to do. So, is there mercy? (laughs) No mercy. (laughs) Just stop. (laughs) One of uh, the things that has been helpful to me, a a saying that I've heard repeatedly uh, in the area of spiritual growth is, uh, do as you can, not as you can't. Do as you can, not as you can't. I hope that you receive that as an expression of mercy. You know what the parameters are in your world, and I want, of course, to communicate freedom to work with your own parameters. I also want to give a word, um, stretch. Stretch. And your stretch needs to be sized for your situation. But I am expecting that there is some way in which each of us uh, can look at the realities of our own situation, how those evening hours um, feel like they need to be spent, and to stretch in faith to believe that as we reapportion for soul care and specifically for vision work, that God will meet us and be faithful to us in what we do and in what we leave undone. And we've done these fall challenges for enough years now that there are multiple stories in our midst of people who've done that with a sense of risk, uh, not knowing how it would reflect in their work environment and found God to be faithful. So I don't want to be naive in brushing over that, but I do want to um, give a word of encouragement to stretch. Awesome.
and you have some resources for us. Yes. Uh, the other thing I want to just let you know, I hope you will take some time uh, when you're given your VIM journal uh, to, to acquaint yourself with it. Um, but in addition to uh, sort of an overarching overview of what we're doing and directions along the lines of what I've shared with you, there are also some additional resource pages. So specifically related to the issue of if you're a parent of young children or a parent of one of our youth, um, there is a pre-populated list of ideas of things you might do together during the challenge. And especially for those of us who have um, kids in the youth group, you should know that the youth are being invited to participate in this challenge. They're being given their own uh, VIM journals during youth group to Today. Uh, additionally, there's a list of ways in which we're going to gather or other opportunities to sort of support our participation in the Vision Challenge. This week, our um, prayer circle, our intercessors will be gathered here in, on Tuesday night, and you're invited to come and join with them in prayer as a, a place of participation together in the challenge. Brad and I will be here uh, in the sanctuary Wednesday night hosting a communal challenge experience. So especially for the extroverts, I know sometimes, you know, as these challenges lean toward quiet and reflection, um, it, it is totally okay to do it in conversation uh, as well as in journal form. And we want to create some communal space. Uh, so look for that list of resources. Also on that list of resources, we are again bringing back the daily encouragement text. So if you've been a part of other challenges we've done, this has been sort of a fun piece. If you would like to subscribe, feel free to bring out your phone right now and let the, the world know that you <laughs> would like to receive these texts. There'll be one a morning that will just be an encouragement to, to stay with it um, and to see what God will do. So. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. I want to invite the worship team uh, to come up as I transition us into our time of worship. You finish up texting um, there. Hopefully you have all that there. I want to offer to you a quote. There's a novelist named Annie Dillard who said that how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. How we spend our evenings, how we spend our hours end up amounting to the quality of life that you and I lead. And I want to challenge us all to place our moments, the moments of our days, in the hands of a good and generous God in confident trust that his intent is to lead us into meaning and into greatness. So let's pray. God, thank you for your love for us, given in the person of your son, and then a vision for a life that is more, that will what we ever could have uh, pieced together for ourselves. Open our eyes to see the beauty of a life that you want to lead us into and give us courage to lay hold of it with all of our heart and soul. We worship you today for the goodness of your gift to us.